Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training for HCIE. Today topic we are going to discuss on BGP. Let's start our part 5. To provide security for BGP, we have uh, four methods over here. So we can use the message digest, uh, GTSM or stand for generalized TTL security mechanism. We can limit the number of route received from peer and uh, finally we can limit the number of AS path length. So the first one here, which is using the MD, MD5, uh, work on the transport level. So assuming that R1 and R2, they are using a BGP and we know that BGP is using TCP. So the message digest 5 is being configured in the TCP. So once the TCP that is actually being sent from R1 and R2, they are trying to authenticate the TCP. If the TCP authentication fail, then the BGP formation will fail. And for you to do this, uh, the command for you to do is very simple. You just need to do a peer, okay, the peer IP address, find it, uh, and then followed by a password, okay, followed by pa password. This is the password. So this is the uh, command for you to configure the uh, MD5. So this is the first one. In this demonstration, I'm going to show how the uh, MD5 authentication works in BGP. So R1, I don't have any authentication. As you can see here, uh, my peering do not have authentication. I'm going to do authentication on the router 2. Okay, so let me go to router 2 and I'm going to start my Wireshark. Okay. So remember that the authentication is done on the uh, TCP connection. All right, so I run my Wireshark already. Uh, for us to configure the MD5 authentication under BGP, what you need to do is just configure who is a peer and what is the password. And I'm going to use a cipher and Huawei. Then I press enter. Right now you notice that when I do a display BGP peer, is still established all right because of the hold down timer so once the hold down timer expired uh, the uh, state here will be uh, disconnect all right so right now it's still established now what i'm going to show you here is the wireshark um, statistic okay so let's have a look on the wireshark here now we are looking into the uh, router 2 to the router 1 so as you can see from here the router 2 and if I go into my transmission control protocol, so this is the, the part that we are going to look into. All right. And if you can see that for this part, sorry. Okay. You'll notice that we have our TCP MD5 signature. But if let's say we look into the TCP from the other side, from one to number two, as you can see that they isn't have much authentication over here. So after a period of time, when the hold down timer expired, you will notice that um, the uh, peering will fail. Okay, so at this moment, it's still established. So I'm going to pause my recording until uh, we will have the uh, time up period. Okay, so as you can see from here, uh, it said that the established, the peering has been changed from established to idle. So if I'm going to do a display BGP peer, you'll notice that now it's actually go to idle. Now if you look into our Wireshark, you'll notice that the BGP is not established. Okay, so as you can see that number one and number two, they can't form the relationship. Primarily because that um, we have configured our authentication early on. Okay, so if I'm going to configure the authentication on R1 now, okay, so I'm going to display BGP peer. All right, you can see R1 is connect, R2 is in idle. So R1 trying to establish, but R2 just refers due to TCP authentication failure. So for me to solve this issue, I just do the uh, same thing on R1. Okay, so once 
I have configured correctly and let the three-way handshaking work. As you can see from here, this is my Wireshark. Okay, so we have the sync, sync, and act. Let it uh, do the handshaking first. And uh, after that, we will have a uh, good connection. So it seems like the uh, three-way handshaking is successfully done. Okay, so we just give them enough time. There you go. All right, so you can see that now I have the open message and I have the uh, keep alive message and update message. So from here, you notice that it's, it's up. Okay, so this is the uh, authentication on um, BGP using MD5 authentication. Now, the second one, generalized TTL security mechanism, uh, what it does is that you're going to check the TTL hop. And um, if you want to configure this GTSM, again, uh, what you need to do is you just configure the peer and you use a command called valid TTL hop and followed by the number of hop that you want. Okay, so this is both the security, one is on the transport level, another one is to check the number of TTL. In this demo, I'm going to show you GTSM or what we call generalized TTL security mechanism. So the GTSM work like this. So assuming that now I have a directly connected uh, interface. So when router one go to router two, they are going to check on the IP TTL. So router one to router two by right, the TTL are supposed to uh, 255 valid hop. Okay, so what it does is that you're going to use the default 255 minus the hop. In this case, the hop count in this case is one. Then they are going to plus the one. So in this case, a valid TTR is supposed to be 255. So this demonstration, I'm going to show you what if I'm going to change the um, GTSM. And for you to do that, all right, let's start this uh, demonstration. I have a uh, good uh, peering, so you can see that it's established. And this uh, router have the authentication that we did earlier on, on the previous lab. Um, what I'm going to do here is that when I do a display BGP peer 10.0.12.2 with the command word uh, you can see that there's none of this uh, GTSM has been configured. All right, or else it will show you somewhere around here that GTSM has been configured. But we do have our MD5 authentication configured. Uh, in the background, I'm also running the Wireshark. So let's start our GTSM configuration first. Let's go into the uh, PGP. Okay, then we are going to use a peer. All right, 10.0.12.2. I'm going to use a valid TTL. And by default, the valid TTL is 255. Now, what will happen if I'm going to say that the valid TTL hop is 254? Okay, so when I configure, I'm going to do a display BGP peer 10.0.12.2 with the world boss. As you can see that I have the uh, GTSM here has been enabled and the valid TTL hop is 254. Now, by right, the valid TTL is 255. And if I look into my BGP peer, you'll notice that it's still established. The reason is because that uh, right now on my Wireshark, okay, let me have a look. Now you can see that all this is the retransmission. And the GTSM is in our IP. So from the IP here, you can see that we have a TTL. Okay, so after a while, you, you will notice that the uh, TCP connection will be disconnected because of the TTL is not valid. So I'm going to pause my recording for this uh, timeout to uh, time out later on. It will disconnect. Then I'm going to show you uh, how to fix this problem. Let me pause my recording now. Okay, so you notice that my system here generate one the status here. It said that established to idle. Uh, the reason is because that the hold down timer has expired and as you can see that the hold down timer for this guy is basically uh, 180 seconds. All right. Okay. So that's my hold down timer. So when I go into the uh, display BGP peer, you'll notice that it's become idle. All right. In router 2, you also notice that it's become idle. So the TTL is in effect now. So for me to fix this, 
uh, what you can do here is I can configure back a correct TTL. So because this is a direct connection, the correct TTL is supposed to be 255. So what I need to do here is I go back and I go to 12.2 and I set that valid TTL is 255. I press enter. Okay, so um, once the uh, VGP detected that the valid TTL, it will come back online. Alright, so there you go. Alright, so you can see that it's come back online here. Display BGP pure. Okay, so it's just established about 12 seconds ago. So uh, the demonstration over here show you how the G GTSM uh, work in Huawei. Now the other two option is not really a very secure way, but it's actually is a way for you to prevent some attack. Now for example, you can limit the number of route received from peer to limit the uh, exhaustion of your memory. And for you to do that, you need to just use a command with the peer and followed by what is the limit of the route. For example, the maximum route in the current VRP is 500,000. So you can actually reduce the number. Uh, for example, you can say that my peer are only allowed to send me maximum 100,000 prefix. In this demo, I'm going to show you how you can limit the route. So in this demo, I'm going to uh, install multiple interface on R1 and send a number of route to R2. So in R2, I'm going to set out the uh, route limit. So firstly, I go into the router 2, all right, and uh, go into my BGP. Assuming that now these uh, routers will not receive a lot of route from R1, okay, so this is your service provider. You want to limit the route that advertised from R1 to R2. So what you need to do is just tell them which peering that you want to limit. So we are going to use a command called route limit. So the limit is from 1 to 500,000. So if I'm going to say that, I will only allow up to 30 route. Okay. Now the second one here is that, uh, do you want them to generate a warning? So this is in percentage, any, any value from 1% to 100%. So if I'm going to give a maximum of 30 route, uh, entry and if 50% of the route exceeded so assuming that if it's more than 25 a warning should be pop up on your console message now here I have an option called idle forever or I idle timeout uh, basically if let's say you configure uh, what we call that you just press enter it would say that if let's say I exceeded 30 entry on the route that's advertised to me, it will just disconnect your peering. And you have to use a, a, a reset BGP for them to re-establish back the connectivity. But assuming that now you want them to try on their own using a uh, idle timeout. So you can say that if you exceed more than 30 entry, and I will give you one minute. All right, within the minute, if you can just reduce the number of route, to be less than 30, I will re-establish back the BGP automatically without the administrator using the, the uh, reset BGP. Okay, so let's just use this command. So I have a command to say that my peering 12.1, I will limit you up to 30 entry. And in the 50%, if you hit more than uh, or 50% and above, I will give you a warning. Anything above it, anything above 30, I'm going to cut you off and reset your connection. But we, after one minute, I'm going to re-establish back your connectivity. Okay, let's see how it goes. So firstly, uh, let me actually show you display BGP routing table with the statistics. So how many entry I have? Right now I have two. So this is way beyond, uh, behind the uh, limit. Okay, so I'm going to create an uh, interface over here. Okay, so I'm going to um, configure this interface so that it will be advertised to uh, R2. So first, I'm going to configure my interface. 
All right, so it's easier for me to just press the uh, copy and paste. I create interface loopback number one, and I created all these interface up to 30 interfaces. Okay, so when I do a display this, you can see that these are all the IP address that I create. So I'm going to import this into my BGP. So I do BGP 100, I say import route direct. Okay, so before this, uh, you notice that this one is actually up to 30. So 30 plus 2, so I should exceed the number of uh, the limit that I set on router 2. So I press enter. Okay, so you can see that it go into idle. In R2, you notice that it said that the number of prefix has been reached. So when I do a display BGP peering, you will notice that it's idle over limit. Okay, and uh, I will wait for one minute. It will try to re-establish the connection. And since I never reduce the number of the uh, loopback interface, it will still idle. So what I need to do is I undo interface loopback one. Sorry, undo interface loopback one. Undo interface loopback one. Okay, so I remove this. I go back into my router 2, it will try to re-establish the connectivity and uh, all right so give it a second and uh, in fact give it a minute all right so the minutes is up already you can see that my peering is established so assuming that if I go back here if I do not use the command called idle timeout you will never establish all right, because in this case, this command said that if let's say we hit a minute, I will retry again. So let, let me do this time one more time, but this time I will use less than 30, but it will above the 50%. So assuming that I'm going to use up to this number of, uh, let me copy the number of interface again. So I'm going to recreate this interface okay so up to 27 so it's still behind so now you can see that once I enable my interface you notice that the console message here is said that reach route threshold of this particular value okay so when I do a display BGP route statistic so I have 31 entry okay so in this case when I go into my display BGP route routing table, all right, so it still have my uh, routing. So I'm going to use one more here, okay, and see what will happen. All right, I'm going to use one more here. Now you can see that when I just reached 31, okay, because the other one is basically is a direct. So once I reach extra one more you can see that it's become idle okay so display bgp peer there you go so if i'm going to remove only one okay i'm going to remove this guy okay so we just wait for a while um it will able to come back all right, so this is how you can actually use the um, route limit for you to prevent your customer, in this case, my downstream over here, to flood a number of prefix to my upstream provider so that it will exhaust the uh, provider memory. Okay, so you can see that now it come back. All right, so when I do a display BGP route, with a verbrose, sorry, with a statistic. You can see that the number of route here is 31, include the direct interface. Okay. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.